Okay. Recording. Peace. Okay. Hey, Alice. Good to see you. Hey, Ocean. Hi. Yeah. All right. Uh, hey, Sam, uh, do you mind just praying and starting us off? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Father, we just want to thank you, Lord, for this amazing opportunity, Lord, that you've given us once again as young people to come together, Lord, to worship you. Mm. I pray, Lord, that you would give us a heart that would please you, Lord, as you've said in your word, that you that you're looking for true worshipers, Lord, who worship in spirit and in truth. I pray, Lord, that we would be that Sweet, sweet smelling aroma, Lord, this evening to your throne room of grace. I ask you, Holy Spirit, to enter, Lord, uh, in, our, in our homes, in our rooms, in our hearts, Lord. Speak to us what, what you need to speak to us, Lord. I, I pray for the speaker. I pray for the worship. Pray, Lord, that uh, for every prayer point that going to be, that's going to be made, every dis discussion that's going to be made, Lord, yes, Lord, just surrender it, Lord, to your throne of grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hey, uh, yeah, so um, just before we get started with worship, right, um, in your chat box, what I want you to do, what I'd like you to do is uh, uh, just mention with one word, uh, what comes to your mind the first time when you hear the name Jesus? Come on, come on. Awesome. Peace, love, comfort, strength, acceptance, savior, friend, savior, love, friend, care, the only one who knows me, accepting. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Thanks for sharing. I mean, uh, one of the things that comes to my mind uh, is uh, it's his beauty. Uh, yeah, you know, um, I don't know, something about um, the beauty of Jesus always kind of cap captivates me. It always has captivated me. Um, <clears throat> and uh, it was when I encountered his beauty, his wonder, uh, Song of Songs became uh, my favorite book of the Bible. Uh, you know, I can go on and on about it, but uh, there's one passage in the Bible, I mean, in Song of Songs, chapter four, uh, excuse me. It says, um, um, this is the groom saying to the bride, saying, you have ravished my heart. Uh, with just one glance of your eyes, you have ravished me. Uh, and that book in many ways is an analogy of a church and the bride. Um, and just imagine Jesus looking at you, straight at you and telling, like, you have ravished my heart. Uh, and that ravish is such a strong, powerful word. Uh, and when and that Jesus is saying that to you, uh, and, when this line hit me, you know, in 2011, uh, I remember it was in the month of May, <laughs> uh, and I was seeing this line, you have ravished my heart, and it hit me that God is looking at me and saying this to me. And I kind of paused and I was thinking, what can I even respond to something like that, you know? Uh, what can I say? Um, and someone so beautiful uh, and someone so awesome as Jesus looks at you, uh, you know, and says, uh, you have ravished my heart. And I can, you know, and I can just look at everybody, every single person and just say, if I had the time, I would do it. But and he's just looking at Joshua and he's saying, Jesus, you have ravished my heart, Joshua. Sharon, you have ravished my heart. Steffi, you have ravished my heart. Uh, and I can go on and on with every single person, you know. And uh, goes on to say, nothing you have done uh, has offended me. 
because um, I am in love with you and uh, because you have ravished my heart with just one glance of your eyes you have ravished him um, so, so is it okay this time if I just encourage you to sing of the beauty of who Jesus is yes can we do that better where you are uh, whoever you are with in the comfort of your room I'm just going to ask you to direct your devotion towards Jesus right now Oh, we look to you. Oh, we look to you right now, Jesus. Just quieten your heart with every other distraction. Just let it all go. Every other thought, every worry. let your heart your eyes just gaze into the eyes of Jesus the one who says you have ravished my heart before we go ahead and sing any song any line David cries out, one thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord for all the days of my life. That I may gaze upon the beauty of the Lord. Can you make that your prayer, that you may gaze upon this beauty of this Lord? A song of songs says, he is the fairest of 10,000 to my soul. He's the fairest of 10,000. That means there is no comparison to how holy he is. He is filled with wonder. His eyes are filled with wonder and he's in love with you tonight. So, Father, we adore you. We pour our affection on you right now, God. We pour our devotion on you, Father. Yeshua. Yeshua. 
tonight open up our eyes to the sea of glass around you to the wonder of who you are we've seen too many things of the world and considered beauty God but I want to worship you in the beauty of your holiness I want to worship you in the beauty of your holiness. I can hear the skies declare your words. Your glory always going forth. There's no language where your voice has not been heard. Day to day the poor for speech. Night to night speaks to me, their utterance to the end of the world. I can hear the skies declare your words, your glory always going forth. There's no language where your voice has not been heard. And day to day they pour forth speech. Night to night speaks to me, their utterance to the end of this world. O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all 
the earth. Oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. I can hear the skies declare your words. Your glory all is going for There's no language where your voice has not been heard. Day to day they pour forth speech, and night to night speaks to me. Their utterance to the end of this world. Oh Lord, our Lord. How majestic is your name in all the earth. Oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Come on, let's sing it out, oh Lord, oh Lord, our Lord. How majestic is your name in all the earth. Oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Then I consider the heavens, the works of the fingers, the moon and the stars which you ordain. Who am I? Who am I? Who am I? When I consider the heavens, the works of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you ordain, who am I? Who am I? Who am I? When I consider the heavens, the works of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you ordain, who am I? Who am I, Lord? Who am I? When I consider the heavens, the works of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you ordained, who am I? Who am I? Who am I? Mm. Oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. How majestic is your name in all the earth. How majestic is your name in all the earth. From the lips of infants you have ordained praise God. Consider heavens, the works of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you ordained. Who am I? Who am I? Who am I? When I consider the heavens, the works of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you ordained. Who am I? Who am I? Still you know me, oh Still you know me, oh You have been And you will be You have seen And you will see You know when I rise When I fall When I come Oh God You see it all you hunger 
start when you move the seas. Still you know me, oh, oh, still you know me, oh, oh, oh. you have been. you will be you have seen and you will see you know when I rise when I when I come for gold, you see it all, you hung the stars, you move the sea, still you know me, oh, oh, still you know me, oh, oh. Nothing is hidden from your sight. Wherever I go, you find me. You know every detail of my life. You are God. You don't miss a thing. Nothing is hidden from your side. Wherever I go, you find me. You know every detail of my life. You are God. You don't miss a thing. You know every detail of my heart. Nothing is hidden from your sight. Wherever I go, you find me. You know every detail of my life. You are God, you don't miss a thing. Oh, you are God, you don't miss a thing. To who can you compare me or who is my equal, says the Holy One. Lift your eyes up to the heavens. He who made these, the starry host, and he is powerful enough to call each one by name. He doesn't miss a thing. A sparrow doesn't fall to the ground without my permission. Are you not more precious than a sparrow, says the Lord? I am your sustainer and I will sustain you. Says the Holy One of Israel tonight. Nothing is hidden from your 
outside Wherever I go you find me You know every detail of my life You are God You don't miss a thing You are God you don't miss a thing Yes, Father, tonight we pause and just accept that you are for us. You are not against us. Lord, our prayer tonight is that you will help us see the wonder and the beauty of who you are because you are so real. Jesus, you are not just a myth, you are not just a legend, you are not just somebody who divided the history, but you are so real, you are so real. There's a doubt in each one of our hearts, like Thomas did. that we expect you to prove something for us to believe you. Lord, you've proved yourself on the cross. That is your ultimate I love you. And I pray that we will, that we will uh, ever live in that wonder of you. Amen. Bless your Father. Holy Spirit, continue to lead us tonight. Speak to us. Let your word pierce our hearts, I pray, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, guys. Hey, uh, thanks for joining in. Um, it's always good to see you all and uh, worship God with you all. Um, yeah, we have a few new people. Jimmy. Thanks again for joining us. It's lovely to have you. Jemmy is Sam's and Jeremy's and Abby's cousin. Gems. Uh, Hi, Gems. Yeah, it's, very, it's a lovely surprise. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Uh, so without a further ado, um, I'm going to ask Sushil to introduce the speaker for tonight. Uh, <laughs> Sushil, come on, man. Go ahead. No, no, Roshan, you do it, please. I can't. <laughs> please do it. Why not, Sushil? <laughs> Right, right. Oh yeah, he's bullying his leg. Right, uh, today, uh, you know, you've heard of this line called a man of few words, but uh, she's a, a woman of a very few words, uh, but when she speaks, mm, okay, <laughs> uh, so it's none other than Sanjana, Sushil's sister, and that's why he hesitated to introduce. <laughs> uh, but Sanjana, looking forward to hearing from you. Awesome. Uh, the mic is yours, the floor is yours, it's all yours. Hey, claps, guys, claps, claps as she enters, you know, claps, slow claps. <laughs> uh, hi, I'll just share my screen, okay, just give me a second. Okay, uh, can you guys see this? Like, if, okay. So, um, what I'm going to be speaking about today is called, like, I just titled it In the Crushing. And uh, before I start, like, I just wanted to say, like, as a disclaimer, that um, anything I say today, like, it doesn't discredit, like, uh, the need or um, the utility of medical um, resources or therapy for any mental health issues or any of that. But we view all of it that it may honor God. Like that's the only thing that I wanted to say before I start. And uh, so uh, one second. Sorry. 
Okay. So uh, I just wanted to read uh, these two verses from Hebrews 4.15. It says that he understands humanity for he was a man. Our magnificent king priest was tempted in every way just as we are and conquered sin. And in the NIV, it says that he d we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one that was tempted in every way. And in Isaiah 53, 3, it uh, describes Jesus as a man of deep sorrow who was no stranger to suffering and grief. Yet, like when we look at the Bible, we see that uh, Jesus is the most emotionally whole and healed man that ever walked the earth. So uh, I just wanted to share something that I read recently by uh, this organization called the Moral Revolution. It says that Jesus dignified every human emotion. What you're feeling has been dignified by Jesus. So it's okay to feel the way that you feel. And Jesus has lived out every emotion that we face, be it anxiety, sadness, hurt or pain. And there's permission for you to be where you are right now. And life is a process. So don't try to bypass the process. Just go with it. Um, sorry. Okay, so uh, the scripture that uh, I'm going to be focusing on today, tonight is Jesus at the Garden of Gethsemane. But just to give you uh, a view of what happened before this was that uh, the night before uh, Jesus was crucified, he did a lot of things. Like it was uh, during the Passover feast. So uh, if you remember, he washed the disciples' feet and he taught them some of the greatest sermons of all time like you know I am the way the truth and the light and uh, he had his last supper with them and he also prayed for all the disciples and every believer after that so after this is when he goes to the garden of Gethsemane and these are the uh, like verses of scripture where it mentions this portion I won't go into each one of them because it'll take a really long time but like through uh, when I'm speaking I will mention like most of it so like you won't be as clueless as possible. So, uh, so uh, I'll just read from Matthew twenty six thirty six. It says that then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane. So Gethsemane means oil press. And to go to the Garden of Gethsemane, they first pass through uh, this uh, place called the Valley of Kedron. And Kedron means to mourn. And then they climb up the Mount of Olives, and then they reach. Gethsemane. So as we uh, go along today, you you might like notice why uh, the Kedron Valley or like Gethsemane meaning uh, oil press has like significance. So it's in uh, Luke 22, 39, it says that uh, Jesus left the upper room with his disciples. And as, his, uh, as was his habit, he went to the Mount of Olives to his place of secret prayer. So, you know, when we see this, we realize that uh, this is some some place that he always used to go, you know, either alone or with his disciples to pray and just be with the father. So this was routine for him. And in Matthew 26, 36, it says that he told them to sit here while I go and pray over there. So if you notice, he goes with all of his disciples, but he asks a few of them to stay there. And he takes just three people along with him. He takes Peter, James and John. So uh, if you remember, these are the same three disciples who were with him on the Mount of Transfiguration. So, um, so like, if you look, like, if you reflect upon these two scriptures, you see that even though, like, uh, in Matthew 17, 1, you see that uh, these three disciples got to witness God in all of, like, Jesus in all of his glory, you know, that he completely left behind when he came to earth. You also see in uh, this portion of scripture in Gethsemane, where they see, like, the other extreme, like, you know, his complete humanity and his intense feelings of sorrow and um, agony. So we see that um, that Jesus wasn't afraid to show, you know, both sides of his disciple. That's how real he was. So uh, if we look at Matthew 26, 37, it says, however, an intense feeling of great sorrow plunged his soul into deep sorrow and agony. So uh, if we look at these two things together, we see that even Jesus needed his disciples. He needed people to be with him in his times of sorrow. So likewise, we need people and community in our, you know, in our deepest valleys and, you know, in our lowest points. So, uh, and when we see that, you know, Jesus was feeling all these emotions, we know that it's perfectly okay to feel any of these emotions. It's just that how we process it is key.
So uh, when we uh, read the first part of Matthew 26, 38, it says that he said to them, my heart is overwhelmed and crushed with grief. It feels as though I am dying. So um, here we see the intensity of emotion that Jesus felt, you know, the intense uh, anguish and the, uh, the tro how troubled his soul was. You know, he, like, he feels it to such an extent that he feels like dying. So we see here how important it is to be honest and vulnerable with the people around us about how we feel. If Jesus did not deny his emotions, like, you know, why should we? And if he was real about it, why can't we, why can't we be real about our emotions? So when I was listening to a message like somewhere along the same topic line, uh, this um, preacher talks about this professor at the University of Houston. Her name is Brené Brown and uh, she does a lot of studies on vulnerability and the positive effects of it. So she says to be vulnerable is the most courageous thing to do. And Jesus has set the bar of vulnerability for us. So I think we should all try to like follow likewise. So uh, if we move on to the second half of Matthew 26, 38, it says, stay here and keep watch with me. So, um, and then uh, also like parallelly in Luke 22, 40, it says that there he told the apostles, keep praying for strength to be spared from the severe test of your faith that is about to come. So can you imagine like the son of man, you know, he, he, like the very like son of God, he comes to earth, but in his deepest, you know, um, trials, he asked prayer from his disciples. So how much more should we ask for prayer, you know, from friends, from family, from fellow believers? So that's why, you know, it's so important to, um, uh, to get connected to community, you know, be it life groups or youth groups or, you know, any community of believers that can really stand with you and support you in your time of trial. And uh, if you look at uh, Matthew 26, 39, it says that, um, then he walked a short distance away and was overcome with grief. He threw himself face down on the ground and he prayed. So, um, so what we see Jesus doing next is he leaves the, even these three disciples left and he runs to the father and he says, Abba, you know, like an Abba in Hebrew, like it's usually, it was usually not an expression that they used to speak to God because it was a very informal way of maybe saying daddy or dad, you know, in our times. So uh, it was very unusual for Jews to use this term, but it shows his intimacy and the personal relationship that he had with the father. And then we also see that uh, he, uh, an angel from heaven appeared to strengthen him. And uh, sorry, in Luke 43, it says that Jesus called for an angel of glory to strengthen him and an angel appeared. And also in Hebrews 1, 14, it says that are not all angels ministering spirits sent out by God to serve, accompany and protect those who will inherit salvation? Of course they are. So, you know, uh, many times, like, you know, we forget that we can ask God for angelic assistance for whatever it may be, be it guidance, protection, or, you know, just ministering unto us. So this is also a tool that, not a tool, sorry, uh, uh, something that we can use to uh, ask God for help. So uh, in Luke uh, 22, 44, it says that, he prayed even more passionately, like one being sacrificed, until he was in such intense agony of spirit that his sweat became drops of blood dripping onto the ground. So uh, this is something that's very unusual that we see, right? But it is a phenomenon that happens like even in like normal human beings. It's called uh, hematidros sorry, <laughs> hematidrosis. So it's the sweating blood. So when people are in uh, great emotional stress, the tiny capillaries in their sweat glands, they break. So when your sweat comes out, it comes mixed with blood. And you know, this just highlights it, what extreme agony and mental anguish he was in, that he even had physical symptoms from it. And, uh, but you can also see that even though he was in such great anguish, the more intense his prayer got. It says that he prayed even more passionately. 
and then if you go on ahead it says that like after he's done praying once he goes and checks on his disciples because you know he asked them to pray for him right but when he goes back they're sleeping again but he wakes them up and says keep alert and pray and also when we look at Luke 22:45 it says that they were exhausted and overwhelmed with sorrow so if you look back on the few chapters before this um like this portion of scripture uh, like you uh, you see that uh, it's when Jesus tells his disciples that he's going to be crucified very soon and the betrayer is going to come and uh, a few of them even know that Judas is going to betray him. So they're overwhelmed that, you know, like the Savior, the Messiah, who they thought was going to save the world at that time was going to like be taken away from them. So they're also in the same like emotion but not to this in intensity so like if you thought of it you know with your normal human mind you'd probably take offense or be hurt that your closest friends didn't stand with you when um you know you were in your greatest ag agony but if you look at jesus you know he just wakes them up and he encourages them to stay up to stay alert and pray and then when we move on uh, down sorry <coughs> in matthew 26 verses uh, 42 and 44, it says that he went for a second time to pray. And when he came back, the disciples were sleeping again, but that didn't stop him. He goes away and prays for the third time. So in this, we can see that his persistence in prayer and dependence on the father, like even when his friends may have failed him, he always looks to the father for, you know, strengthening him and uh, to support him through this uh, difficult period. Um, so uh, when all of this is done, when he prays for the third time, and then when he calls his disciples, is when Judas comes with all of the Roman gods and everything. But even if you look at his interaction with Judas, it is, it's not something I think any of us would have probably done. So in Luke twenty two forty eight, 48, it says that Jesus looked at him with sorrow because he knows what he's going to do. But it also says in Matthew 26, 47, that he was once a trusted disciple of Jesus. So even though Jesus knew from the very beginning that he was the one who was going to betray him and he was the one who was going to give him away, that didn't stop him from loving him. That didn't stop him from treating him the same as every other disciple. And in Matthew 26, 50, even, like he, Jesus even calls him my beloved friend. And we all know that Jesus doesn't lie. So for him to call Judas his beloved friend, that means that Jesus actually considered Judas as his beloved friend. So this is not really related to what I was speaking, but then I found it really like intriguing in this passage of scripture. So I just mentioned it. And uh, if we move on to uh, later in the passage in Mark 14, 41 to 42, uh, Jesus says that um, the end has come and the hour has arrived for the Son of Man to be handed over to the authorities uh, of sinful men. Get up and let's go. Don't you see my betrayal draws near? So even though he's in such great anguish and di distress from, you know, the weight of our sin on him and the weight of like, not only in that current period of time, but from creation till, you know, when Jesus is going to come back, like the sin of the entire world was on his shoulder at that time. So even through that entire sorrow and anguish, Jesus still rises above and, you know, he goes like he wants to do what God has called him to do. So um, if you remember, like when the uh, Roman guards come to take him away, Simon Peter becomes, you know, so emotional and agitated that he cuts off one of the Roman soldiers' ears. So in Luke 22, 51, we says that Jesus stopped, we see that Jesus stopped the incident from escalating any further by shouting, stop, that's enough of this. And then he touches the right side of the injured man's head and the ear grew back and he was healed. So even in these trying times, you know, when he's in such emotional distress, when he's betrayed by one of his friends, when he's being taken away to die on the cross, even in those times, he still heals and works uh, miracles um, through it all. And uh, when we look, when we read later on, it says in Mark uh, 14, 50, that uh, at this point, all of his disciples ran away and abandoned him. And he actually foretells this in like before all of this happened in John uh, 16, 32. It's, uh, it says that at the time, uh, and the time has come when you will all be scattered and each one of you will go uh, your own way, leaving me alone. 
forget I am never alone for the father is always with me. So I think this is a reminder to us that though it may seem like uh, everybody in your life has abandoned you or let you down, even your closest companions, be your friends or your family, you can always count on the father because he will never ever leave you. So this is the assurance that we have in Christ. So when we look at this whole passage of scripture, like what do we see? I'm really sorry if I went too fast. But uh, we see that in this crushing and this pressing of the oil press of Gethsemane, with the weight of the world sin on his shoulders, Jesus is like, you know, um, so if you like take a parallel with uh, Gethsemane as the oil press, his oil was his offering of pure surrender, devotion, obedience, trust, and love to the Father. And what did this result in? Him eventually dying on the cross and bringing us salvation. And we see that in John 3, 16 to 17, it says that for God so greatly loved and dearly prized the world, that he even gave his one and only begotten son, so that whoever believes and trusts in him as savior shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son onto the world to judge and condemn the world that is, but to initiate the final judgment of the world, but the world might be saved through him. So as he, you know, um, as he uh, fought through and, you know, overcame that night of anguish, it was so that he could die on the cross the next day. And, you know, the promises uh, that, as in all the prophecies were fulfilled through this. So if we look at Isaiah 53, 7, it says that he humbly submitted to what the Lord had called him to do. And in Hebrews 5, 8, it says that, uh, but even though he was the wonderful son, he learned to listen and obey through his suffering. So if you look at the Hebrew word for this, it means to pay attention or to hearken or to listen for the knock on the door. So through Jesus' sufferings, uh, through his sufferings, all of these were lessons to listening and obeying to God. So if you just look at this verse closely, can you imagine that Jesus, as the son of God, he had to learn to listen to the voice of God. So how much more do we need to learn to listen to the voice of God to obey him? So I think this is also an encouragement for us because it's not like, you know, Jesus just popped into the world, like clearly listening to the voice of God. It's something that he developed over those 30 years before he started his ministry. So I think uh, we can really draw from this that, you know, it is a learning process. And if Jesus did it, then we can do it too. Um, so I just want to ask everybody in like at this time to just pause for a few seconds and think that, you know, there's so much going on in our world today. You know, some of our lives have been turned uh, upside down and toppy turvy. But in like, you know, in your seasons of Gethsemane, like in your Gethsemane seasons, what is your oil of offering? Um, so uh, here are a few examples of what your uh, oils of offering can be. It can be joy. And this is seen in Psalms 92.10. It can be gladness. Or abundance. It can be your oil of anointing. So in your season, like in your, uh, in this current season of pressing and crushing, are you, are you producing any of these oils? Are you producing the fruits of the spirit? So that's what I want to challenge like each one of us today, including me. Um, so I also want to read the scripture. It says uh, in Hebrews 12, 3 to 4, so consider carefully how Jesus faced such intense opposition from sinners who uh, oppose their own souls so that you won't become worn down and cave under life's pressures. After all, you have not yet re reached the point of sweating blood in your own opposition to sin. So um, if you look at like the few uh, chapters before the Garden of Gethsemane, we see that Jesus has already given us the solution and the answers you know, to all of this before time. So, um, so the first thing that he tells us about is his peace. So if you read in John 16, 33, it says that, and everything I've taught you is so that the peace which is in me will be in you and will uh, give you great confidence as you rest in me. For in this unbelieving world, you will experience trouble and sorrows, but you must be courageous for I've conquered the world. And also in John uh, 14, 27 to 28, it says, 
I leave the gift of peace with you, my peace, not the kind of fragile peace given by the world, but my perfect peace. Don't yield to fear or be troubled in your hearts. Instead, be courageous. Remember what I've told you, that I, might, I must go away, but I promise to come back to you. So if you truly love me, you will be glad for me, since I am returning to the Father who is greater than I. So, uh, so this is one of the promises that he gives to the disciples before this, that, you know, his peace is always with us. And it's a perfect peace. It's nothing like the world, what the world can offer us. It's something that only he can offer us. And the second thing is the promise of his spirit. So in John 14, 16 to 17, it says that, And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another Savior, the Holy Spirit of Truth who will be to you a friend just like me, and he will never leave you. The world won't receive him because they can't see him or know him, but you will know him intimately because he will make his home in you and will live inside you. So uh, if you look at the Greek word for the Holy Spirit, it's parakletos, and some of the words that can be used to describe it are counselor, comforter, advocate, encourager, intercessor, or helper. So these are two things that, you know, like, that God has promised us, you know, even through our seasons of crushing, you know, that is his peace and his Holy Spirit. And another one is his presence. So these are the uh, few things that, you know, we can really hold on to. So um, I just want to take some time to pray at this time. So, Oh, Father, Lord, uh, we just thank you, Lord, for this time, Master God, of hearing from your word, Lord. Lord, I thank you for enabling me to speak, Lord. Lord, I'm sorry if I went too fast, Lord, but I pray, Lord, that everybody, Lord, would be able to take away, Lord, what you want to re- what you want them to receive from you, Lord. And Lord, um, at this time, Lord, I just pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit, Lord, would challenge us, Lord, that through our seasons of pressing and crushing, O Master God, Lord, that you would inspire us, O Master God, to bring our oil of offerings to you, Lord, whatever it may be, O Master God, whatever you want to produce in this season, O Master God, Lord, I just pray, Lord, that we will live in the fullness of you, Lord, in the fullness of your peace, O Master God, and your spirit, O Master God, and I just pray, Lord, that we would know you intimately, Lord, even in this season, O Master God, Lord, we, I pray, Lord, Lord, that we would know your spirit intimately, Lord, and we would grow in this season, oh Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Uh, I also wanted to, uh, if we have some time, okay, uh, to take up any prayer requests. So if you have uh, any prayer requests, you can send it to us in uh, the chat window and uh, we'll assign someone to pray for you. Or if you don't want to send it in like the chat window openly, you can send it to one of the co-hosts personally. We'll just give it uh, a minute or two. Okay, if we don't have any prayer requests, I'll hand it over to Roshan. Um, yeah. Why do I have to speak now? <laughs> uh, oh, man. Ooh. Can we just close our eyes wherever we are? Let's just continue to uh, fix our eyes on this Jesus that was just portrayed to us. Come on. I want you to picture yourself in the Garden of Gethsemane with Jesus. I want you to see what he is doing is that he is doing it for you. Just picture him. Just imagine Jesus fighting 
fighting to be alive, fighting every temptation. He can call upon the legions of angels to save him and to take everything away, but he is not doing that. Come on, guys, just just look at Jesus on his knees in that garden of pressing. I'm just feeling this. Uh, it's, it's a very, I'm, it's a very strange word. Uh, I am hearing the restoration, but it's not for the materialistic things. But I'm hearing that God is restoring um, your innocence. Uh, um, some of us, I don't know who, but some of you, or oh, some. Somebody has, you felt like ever since something has happened to you or some, someone has betrayed or abused you, you felt like that, um, that, you, that you've lost this innocence and, and you're seeing the whole world in a, in a different light. Uh, and I want to declare this, and he's restoring innocence to you right now. He's restoring innocence back into your life. Um, the innocence of a child. An innocence of a child who doesn't know uh, right from wrong or whatever it is, but who's so genuine and authentic. Um, he's touching you right now. I don't know who that word is for, but he's touching you right now. He's restoring your innocence. Thank you, Father. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I pray that in the crushing, that we will not forget to worship you, God. Lord, I pray that in this crushing, in the season of crushing, Lord, I pray that, that our, the oil that comes out of our lives will be a sweet smelling oil, my Father. Thank you, Jesus. I pray in Jesus' name, Amen, 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 Amen. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Sanjana, for uh, for that. I don't know what to say. But, uh, yeah. Thank you. Uh, so thanks, guys. Thanks, everybody, uh, for joining in, for taking the time off for Friday night. Uh, you know, it's always awesome. It's, it's wonderful. We do it for you guys. So thank you. Uh, when you can, uh, you know, if you know people from the church uh, and you from the church, uh, please go ahead and, hey, if you've been blessed, we've been doing this for, what, I think, three months now. Uh, if you've been blessed, uh, why don't you extend the invitation to any of your friends in your life groups or anybody, you know, this is open to everybody. Anybody can join in. Um, yeah, there is no secret agenda to any of this, but it's just to bless you all, equip you all, empower you all. Yeah. Um, so thank you once again, guys. Um, I hope you guys are doing well. Uh, you know, um, if, if you have my number through the week, uh, please don't hesitate to uh, drop by and say a hi. Uh, <laughs> you know, I'd, I'd love to hear from, from you guys. Okay. I might not 
be able to message everybody, but then I'd love to see your message. Okay. Uh, thanks, guys. Uh, I hope you have a good night. Um, any announcements? JP, social, anything? Am I missing anything? Are we all good? Awesome. Okay, then. All right. Good night, guys. See you all. Bye-bye. God bless.